Yo, what's up guys, Sam here. So I wanna show you some really cool iPhone hidden features and changes that you probably don't know about. I bet there's at least one thing on this list that you have never seen before. I beta tested this with like two of my friends. So if you're excited for this video, hidden features and changes on every iPhone, drop a like down below to seriously help me out and hit subscribe so you stay up to date. Let's go ahead and get started with number one. First up, if you're ever being followed or you're in a situation where you don't want someone to make you scan your face or scan your fingerprint into your phone, Apple actually has a built-in feature Feature under emergency SOS where if you have call with side button on but turn auto call off if you tap the side button five times in quick succession just like this you'll notice that face ID is no longer enabled in fact the only way to get back into that phone is with a person's passcode so if you were being chased or followed you could do that and then the only way someone could get into your phone was by somehow figuring out your passcode and not using your fingerprint or your face speaking about face ID specifically if you have one of the newer iPhones there is actually a way to add two people's faces to your phone. Apple added the ability to introduce a second face. You'll notice that if you are in the face ID and passcode preferences, there's an option right here that says add alternate appearance, but you can actually scan your partner's face, your boyfriend, girlfriend, best friend, anyone else's face as a second identity and have your phone unlocked that way as well. So it doesn't look like it would work this way, but it does. When you swipe down on the home screen like this, you get into the spotlight search interface which is a feature that I think a lot of people don't use to its full extent. Yes, you can search for apps easily. Yes, you can tap on apps. You can even search for contacts and the like. But did you know you can also do math and track flights in here? Yeah, math, multiplication, subtraction, division, even multiplication. You can do all of that on the fly here in Spotlight Search without even having to launch the calculator app. And I have a cool tip for that coming up very shortly. But in addition to that, you can also track flights. So if you have a flight number, a lot of people think you have to go to Google or go to that flight's website like AmericanAirlines.com to track it. No, you can just type in that flight identifier and right here on your home screen in Spotlight Search, you can see exactly where a plane is, when it's departed, where it's going, if it's on time. And speaking of planes, this one's even cooler. Look above you, there might be a plane in the sky right now. If you ask Siri, what plane is above me, Siri will actually give you a list of all the planes. Sometimes I look up and just ask myself, I wonder where that plane is headed. And with Siri, you can do that and you'll see some results for exactly what planes are above you, what brand, the model identifiers, and what they're up to, which is kind of creepy, but also kind of cool. Next up, inside of the Photos app, there is a way to hide photos, but not in the sense that they are completely confidential or private. Essentially, this new feature where if you tap on a photo, not even new, this has actually been around for a while, and then tap on the share icon and then tap on hide, it will remove them from every instance of your photo library any albums and put them in only one spot. At the very bottom of the albums page, if you scroll all the way down here, there is an album titled Hidden. I think it's right above recently deleted. It will put that photo in there, and while it is hidden from the rest of your library, uh, you know, if it was a sensitive photo of some sort, if you know what I'm saying, someone could actually go into your phone and then tap on your hidden album with no further authentication if your phone was already unlocked and see what's there. But if you simply want to have something a bit more low-key but still inside of your Photos app, well, put it in the hidden album and it will reside there but nowhere else. Next up is a feature first introduced with the iPhone 6 called Reach ability that allows you to easily access parts of your screen that are hard to reach when you're holding your phone with one hand. On older iPhones, you enable it by double tapping on the Touch ID sensor. On newer iPhones, just slide down on like the bottom edge of your screen. You enable it in accessibility settings and here you can see it literally just moves the top portion of the screen closer to the middle of your display so that you can reach icons, reach control center, reach notification center without having to stretch a bunch. Furthermore, Apple also has a feature similar to this for your keyboard. If you tap and hold on your globe or emoji icon, you may have never noticed this before, but there are like arrow left and arrow right keyboard icons. And when you use either of those, it shrinks down the keyboard to like an iPhone 4S or iPhone 5S size where it's super easy to reach everything, but the keyboard is relatively tiny. So again, if you do have smaller hands or you can't easily reach certain parts of your keyboard, you can do that with one hand now. And then again, when you're done, tap on this arrow or go back to that globe icon to revert it to its normal state. On top of that, if you have iOS 13 installed, you have a swipe keyboard. So you can now swipe to type like 
Android devices have had pretty much forever. I think Apple made a pretty big deal about this one, so it's not super hidden, but pretty handy if you ever don't feel like typing, or again, you might be using one hand instead of two. On the keyboard, if you don't use this regularly already, it is so handy. You can tap and hold on the space bar on any iPhone or any iPad and drag the cursor around using the keyboard as a trackpad or a mouse pad of sorts. It's really handy, it allows you to navigate text so easily, and sometimes it's better than like picking up the cursor and using that magnifying glass to drag it somewhere else. Scrolling on the iPhone has always been really great because in pretty much any scroll UI, you can tap on the top of the screen to go all the way back up to the top instantaneously, but what if you want to go to the bottom really quickly? Well, you could do this where you just keep swiping and swiping and swiping really aggressively, or if you have iOS 13 installed, you could tap and hold on the scroll bar itself and actually navigate the device that way. This is pretty cool. It feels like more of a pro feature, but you would never know it unless you accidentally tapped and held on the scroll bar itself. And then you can go up and down super quickly. If you've ever heard a certain verse to a song where it wasn't the actual chorus, so you didn't know what the title was, but you wanted to figure out what song it was, you could type in those exact song lyrics that you do know inside of the music app. And even if nothing like quick suggest or quick search pops up, go ahead and just manually hit search and Apple will find the lyrics that you are referencing. It's worked really well from what I've experienced. There's been pretty much no circumstance where the lyrics that I typed in didn't come up with at least some songs similar to it. So next time you can't figure out what the name of a song was, but like that one verse is stuck in your head, just type it in and you'll be able to figure it out right inside of the music app. Whenever you're installing a bunch of apps at once, let's say when you get a new phone or you just are on like a binge for downloading new games, you might be in a situation where you want one thing to download before everything else. And by tapping and holding or hard pressing if you have a device with three touch on that icon that you want to download first, you'll notice a really cool option called Prioritize Download, where Apple will shift all the bandwidth towards downloading that one app first prior to downloading anything else. I found this especially handy when I'm on a slow cellular or Wi-Fi signal where it would take forever to get to the social media app or the game that I really want, so I'll just prioritize that download and start getting involved with it instantly. Now I know in the Photos app I showed you how to hide photos but not actually lock them, but the same is not true with notes. You can completely lock notes down with a passcode or Touch ID, or Face ID, and here's how you do that. You can type in your super secret note, tap and hold on that note, or again, 3D Touch if you have that functionality, and here you'll see an option that says lock. When you tap on that, you'll have to actually enter a specific passcode for what you want that entry into the note to be, and then you do have the option to use Touch ID or Face ID, but you don't have to. When you've done that, go out of the app, close it, go back in, you'll notice that not anybody can get to that note and it shows a lock icon. So next time you've got something really personal that you don't want anybody else to see, you can lock it down on your iPhone, passcode protect your iPhone, and passcode protect that note too. If you're updated to iOS 13, you can jump over to Control Center and actually change your Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connectivity on the fly. You don't have to go to settings any longer. Just tap and hold here, or again, 3D Touch as well works, and then tap and hold here again, and you'll notice that you can change Wi-Fi networks on the fly, or same for Bluetooth. If you wanna to connect to a Bluetooth device and it's not automatically connected, you can do it from Control Center. You don't have to stop what you're doing completely, jump into the settings app and deal with it there. You can do everything now from Control Center. If you have a lot of notifications built up inside a notification center, you can delete each of them sorted by day or category by clicking on the X and doing that multiple times, or you can just long press on the X here and clear all your notifications. You get this cool UI where everything else blurs out and it just says clear all notifications and you know as you would suspect when you tap on that option, whoa guys look at that, it actually clears out all of your notifications. It is important to note though there is no going back so if there's one notification that you really wanted it's going to clear pretty much everything but like a reminder or timer out. Inside of the calculator app this one is so handy if you ever have some numbers to enter which is generally what you do here and you press the wrong one. You don't have to ace see or see it to clear everything out, you can actually just backspace by swiping left or right to left on the black area right up here and then enter the proper number that you initially meant to input. This is so handy. I use this all the time because we're humans, we're a bit clumsy, and now you can do all the right calculations all the time. Command Z or the undo action on a computer is probably the function that I use the most over anything else, but your iPhone actually has that as well and so does your iPad. You could shake your phone to do it like that and yes, literally shaking your phone 
when you've deleted a string of text or removed something that you didn't mean to remove will allow you to undo it, which just looks a bit archaic. But if you don't want to look a bit out there, just waving your phone in the air. You can now in iOS 13 take three fingers and swipe left or three fingers and swipe right to undo or redo respectively. You can also double tap with two finger or three fingers twice to bring up the, like the undo, redo, copy paste UI, but I really don't find myself using it that often. Just know that shaking or swiping left with three fingers will allow you to undo that thing that you just did. Let me know what your favorite feature change was down below in the comment section, and of course, drop a like or subscribe if you enjoyed the video and you wanna see more videos like this in the future. I had a lot of fun working on this one. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you're able to use your iPhone a bit better than you were before you watched this video. That's all for now. I've been Sam, and I'll catch all of you in my next video.